I'm so delighted to be in your faces again today. I hope you're happy to see my face. <laughs> I believe you are. If you're a returning subscriber, I'm so thankful for the support you give to my channel. I see your comments. Uh, you like my videos and you are just coming back to see my content back to back. And I'm so grateful. I'm so glad to be an impact on you in one way or the other. And for those who are new to my channel, I'm so delighted to have you stop by my channel today. I'm Sharani and I would like you to please subscribe to this channel. Every content on my channel, music and word will bless you, trust me. So do well to subscribe. And for everyone listening to me right now, I would like you to like this video before you go on. Thank you. The issue of dressing has become controversial, surprisingly, within the body of Christ. It doesn't affect women only, even if we know that most times, all the time, fingers are pointed to the women more than the men. As much as women are expected to dress decently as believers, um, men too are expected to dress decently because there's a way a man could dress that you would know that, no, this is off. But we know that women are more guilty, sorry to use that word, than the men. And women tend to be on that side of indecent dressing more than men. Now, before you go on with this video, I would, like to, I would like you to listen with an open heart. I know that when it comes to dressing, it has become very sensitive for many women. They don't want people to talk, talk about it. They don't want people to tell them how to dress and how not to dress. This is not me telling you how to dress or how not to dress. I'm just showing you from scriptures what is expected as women who are believers. Because there are some things that the workings of the Holy Spirit will do in you that may not do in the unbelieving person. But if you claim that you are saved and you are born again and you know the Lord, some things are expected as you mature and you go in the walk, in your walk with God and as the Spirit of Christ dwells in your heart. So please listen with an open heart. It's very controversial now. It's very, it's very, sen it's a very sensitive topic because we have people that are doing great things for God. Women that are on the front line, they are doing great things for God. They are people you admire, but they don't dress. They dress provocatively, they reveal when they dress. So sometimes it gets you confused and sometimes you are in that place where you are thinking, well, so and so person reveals her body. Well, so and so person dress provocatively and God still moves through her. She's still living a life of impact. She's still blessing people. Well, there's no doubt about that because you're dressing provocatively or, provocatively or not does not even mean that God will love you less. If you dress, if you reveal your body or you don't reveal your body, God loves you. That's the truth. God loves you. He would not love you any less because you revealed your body or you didn't reveal your body. And another thing is that dressing is not what like what endorses you as a believer or as a child of God. Because there are people that are all covered up. They cover up. They dress decently and modestly. But their heart is not right with God. So, you see, <laughs> I believe strongly as a believer that the state of your heart um, speaks in how you dress. Everything about you as a Christian lady wants to honor the Lord and it begins from the heart. If you have a heart that is reverent towards God and wants to honor God in everything, it flows, like it just shows outside. The Bible says that it's not what goes into a man that corrupts him, it's what comes out of him. So the product of your life, how you choose to dress, how you choose to live your life, the words you choose to say, they are a product of what is inside. So what is inside? A good tree cannot bring forth a bad fruit. That tree is your heart. It produces fruit that is visible for all to see. People may not be able to look into your heart or see your heart, but how you express yourself outwardly speaks about what is in your heart. When your heart is inclined and aligned to God, you want the attention to be put on God and not draw attention to self. Believe me, no matter how much people say that they dress for themselves and it's not about anybody, it just, it just makes me feel good. When people dress provocatively or they reveal parts of their bodies, sensitive parts of their bodies that are supposed to be private, is actually to draw attention to themselves. And it all, it all boils down to the works of the flesh. The flesh would always want to glorify itself. The flesh would always want to draw attention to itself. So there may be no dress code in the Bible, but the understanding of some scriptures, the workings and the ministry of the Holy Spirit in us as ladies, discretion, wisdom, and even our conscience, can guide us into knowing what is right and what is not right. What is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So you see, I just made that analogy from the state of the heart because what is in your heart shows outwardly. A woman whose heart is ruled by her flesh would have it reflect in the way she dresses. A woman whose heart is ruled by the Spirit of God would have it reflect in her dressing. So when you want to draw attention to yourself, when you want to reveal yourself, it's a work of the flesh and nobody that is in the flesh can please God. It's in the scriptures. Those who walk in the flesh cannot please God. You have to be in the spirit to please God. So I think you're already, you're already beginning to get understanding right now. So there may be no dress code in the Bible, but some scriptures will let you know what is right and what is not right. So every time you stand in front of the mirror and you put on a dress and you look at yourself in the mirror, 
Ask yourself, what is in my heart? Why am I dressing this way? Think about the motives of your heart. Think about the intentions, the intents of your heart. And ask yourself sincere questions. Why? Why do I want to reveal my cleavage? Why do I want my clothes to be tight-fitting? Am I trying to gain acceptance? Um, do I think if I dress this way, people would pay more attention to me, accept me more, look at me more? Am I drawing attention to my flesh? Or am I trying to glorify God in the way I dress? When you ask yourself these questions and you see that it all points to flesh, it all points to you wanting attention, you wanting people to look at you and say, oh, you look good. You, It's good for people to look at you and say you look good, but you understand what I mean in this regard. You wanting people to just look at you and have their attention on you. Ask yourself that question and you would know what is right and what is not right. Another thing is that I believe that if you're a lady led by the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit guides you in how to dress. There are times I've worn some things and I stood in front of the mirror and I heard the Holy Spirit telling me, you're not going on with that and I'll go and change it. So I wonder how ladies say that the Holy Spirit leads them and guides them. And really they walk, yeah, they, you see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in their lives. But when it comes to dressing, it's something they are blocked up. They don't hear the voice of the Spirit in that regard. They don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead them in that regard. So look at your heart. You're dressing many times, all the time. Reveal the state of your heart, especially when it comes to provocative dressings. What is in people's heart can be masked by decent dressing. I said that already and I established that. There's no doubt about that. Somebody's heart can be evil and dirty and wicked and their dressing betrays it. Their dressing covers it up. But for provocative dressing and revealing dressing and indecent dressing, many of the times, and trust me, all of the times, the state of your heart reveals in, in how you dress. A heart that wants to glorify the flesh. Or glorify God. Ask yourself that question whenever you stand in front of the mirror. I believe that has helped you in some way. Something else that should guide you as a Christian lady when you want to dress. I've talked about the state of the heart is love. It all still boils down to the heart. Is there love in your heart for the people of the opposite sex? We know that men are visual. No matter how much we want to argue as women, men are visual. They are moved by what they see. We may want to argue it and say, I don't care, let them be visual, blah, 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 and all of that. But that's the truth. That's how God has wired them. They are visual. They are moved by the things they see. Two years ago or last year, I can't remember vividly when, but I was still in Nigeria. I went to church on a Sunday and I sat in the crowd. Two rows ahead of me was a lady. Her dress wasn't revealing, but it was provocative. It was very tight fitting. It was this kind of um, stretchy material that accentuated her whole shape. And it was just, it was a disaster. Permit me to say that. For every movement of our body, it was catastrophic. Uh, I can't, like, as a lady, when I saw it, I was like, wow. And that was two rows ahead of me. The row next to me were two guys sitting right behind her. And the third row was, was, where, was where I was. And when praise and worship began, she just let loose. Yeah, she was in the presence of God. And in the presence of God, there's liberty, right? So she just let loose and she was dancing. And it was not a, it was not a good sight, believe me. Everything was, was crazy. So I realized, and you know, from my row, I was looking at it, I was wondering, like, God, what is going on? I just wish somebody could tell this lady to sit down or something. Like, I felt very uncomfortable with, with that. Everything was just shaking and she was just there dancing, dancing with all her energy. And I looked at the two guys behind her and that was where, that was what touched me. That was what broke my heart. The two guys behind her couldn't look straight. They couldn't look straight onto the altar because the praise leader was on the altar. But looking at the altar meant having this lady in their view and i saw the confusion two of them were looking sideways praise was going on they couldn't look up they were just they didn't know where to put their their eyes they would look this way look that way look they were just looking around and till the praise was over and they finally all sat down and when i sat down i was just wondering like okay this lady woke up in the morning dressed up and came to church to worship god and in her bid to worship god she became a stumbling block in the path of those who also came to worship god where is the love in that Believe me, that's not an act of love. That's why as a lady, stand before the mirror every morning. You have a mirror in your house, look at it and ask yourself, this way I'm dressed, am I walking in love? It's not about church alone. Even when you go to work, when you, men are everywhere. We know from scriptures that anything that you do, love has to be the motive. If love is not the motive, it's not acceptable to God. So that's why you should ask yourself, do I love my brother enough not to be a stumbling block on their path? That is where I'm going with that. Do I love my Christian brother or my fellow brother or the or the male gender enough not to be a stumbling block on their part? Yes, God lo does not love you any less because of how you dress. He loves you, but you, do you love the Lord? You can tell me, yes, I love God. But you know that your love for God is not by saying I love God. It's by the things that you do. It's by the way you choose to dress. 
not because um, I feel God is going to judge me if I reveal my body. That's not even what that's not what I'm talking about. That is far from me. God is not judging you by revealing your body. But do you love God enough to dress decently and not be a stumbling block on the path of somebody that Jesus also died for? Because that's how I see it. This is my brother that I'm thinking that I don't care. Jesus died for him. It matters to God as well. So why would I be a stumbling block? He came to church to worship God and I became a stumbling block. He stepped out of his house to go to work and he saw me on the road and I became a stumbling block. Some people argue that there are some men, in fact, wear a tent or cover yourself from head to toe. They will still rip you open with their eyes. They are that lascivious. I don't argue that. There are men that are that lascivious. But you do your due diligence that you are not a contributor to anybody's sin. You, don't, you are not a partaker in anybody's sin. Just do your own due diligence that as much as, as, as it lies with you or in you, you are not a stumbling block. Now look at this scenario. You went out or you went to the bank, you went to church, you went somewhere and you dressed provocatively. And it, it, to, to you it's all about you. But it's not, it's not really all about you alone. You are living in a world where you are, you are connected with people. And we know that as believers, uh, we don't just say it's all about me. You have to consider your brothers. You have to consider your sisters as believers. That's what I'm talking to believers. I'm not talking to anybody who has imbibed or who is living by the standards of the word. I'm talking of, of the world. I'm talking about people that are living by the standard of the word of God. You are truly a child of God. Those are the people I'm talking about. I'm talking to today. So that's what I'm asking that you open your heart. With your open heart, receive this message. I'm not judging you. I'm not out here to condemn you because God is not even condemning you for revealing your body that's the truth god is not condemning he's not judging you so who am i i'm just trying to to admonish you as a fellow sister in christ as believers we are very interconnected as believers we can't live our life and say i don't care no you, you have to care you have to care how your life affects others you have to care how your dressing affects others so you can just go out as a christian lady and just say it's, i don't care it's it's my life i can live my life i can do how i like so i can go to the bank and it's, it's nobody's business nobody should tell me how to dress a lot of people say now i saw a post on facebook and somebody was trying to talk about revealing dressing and when i went to the comment section my heart broke believers were telling her to, to not tell them how to dress it's not your business you don't tell me how to dress well, nobody's telling you how to dress. I'm not even telling you how to dress. I'm just showing you scriptures. And from scriptures, you know what is right and what is not right. So like I was saying, you go out and you feel that, well, I've chosen to dress this way. It's my life. I can live it how I like. And somebody saw you and saw your cleavage, saw how revealing your clothes was, saw how immodest and provocative your clothes was. A brother saw it and he didn't um, do anything with you. But after he saw that thing, he went back home and fell back into a struggle with pornography maybe he's trying to overcome pornography but because of what you showed him probably even on your social media handle you posted something and somebody was scrolling through and they saw it and from your from your from your timeline they opened the pornography web website even if they have been trying to overcome pornography they opened the pornography website because your image what they saw you were where on your page or out there triggered something you may think that this thing is basic. Trust me, it's not. It's not. It's not as light as you see it. The way you dress can trigger something with somebody who is trying, who is struggling with pornography or who is struggling with lust. If somebody is struggling with lust or pornography and you dress provocatively, you may think, well, it's just, it's just a little part of my cleavage. It's nothing. But because they have a struggle with it, it can trigger something. They can go back to something that they are, they have risen up from. They can go back to something that God has delivered them from. Or if it is something they are in, it can promote it more. So the guy may see your cleavage or your immodest dressing and may not touch you, may not do anything with you, may not fornicate with you. But on the account of what they saw, they went back and went back to pornography, they went back and their mind was filled with lustful thoughts, or they went back and actually fornicated. Do you get? They didn't fornicate with you, but because your image or what you presented to them sparked up something that opened up or fanned up some flames that were already dying and they went back to fornicate. Or for somebody who is actually struggling with loss or living practically in loss, they can see you and how you dress. They can see your social media page and what the pictures you put there or how you dress outside and go back to fornicate. They didn't fornicate with you. But your image or what you presented prompted that. Trust me, that is on your account. That is on your account because you were a stumbling block. And as believers, we shouldn't be a stumbling block on the path of people. So when you dress, think about the opposite sex. Remember that they are very visual people. Don't say, I don't care. Don't say, it's not my business. It's your business because the Bible doesn't want, the, the Lord doesn't want, to be, want you to be a stumbling block on the path of somebody. So it's your business. Do your due diligence to not be a stumbling block on somebody's path. Do your due diligence to not be the reason why somebody that Jesus died for as well is struggling with sin. 
because Jesus died for them as well. Jesus could have just looked at all of us and said that, well, <laughs> they are living in sin, they are going to hell, it's not my business. Do you get? So it's the same way Jesus felt that we are his business and he, he counted us worthy to come and die for. Your Christian brother is your business. How you dress, the state of your heart is your business and make sure that you are not a stumbling block on their path. So a heart of love makes you not to be a stumbling block on the part of people. If truly you love the Lord, then you love your brother enough not to be a stumbling block on their path. As a Christian lady, everything about you should preach Christ. Don't dress in a way that is contradictory to your Christian testimony. You claim that you love the Lord and God is working in you, the Holy Spirit works with you, but your dressing contradicts. Your dressing tells that you are lying. Your dressing is lying against you practically. So as a Christian lady, every part of your life, you want to please the Lord. And as Christians, our dressing should actually display humility and the fear of God. I'm not saying don't dress good. Dress good. Dress nice. It's okay to dress good and dress nice. In fact, even if you buy expensive clothes, it's none of God's business. God has blessed you with the money. Go ahead and buy expensive clothes. So I'm not saying don't wear expensive clothes. Don't wear designers. God, God is not particular about those kind of things. Do you get? So you can use your money to buy what you think looks good on you. But in all that you are doing, ensure that love is your motive when you go to, the next time you go to um the store to get clothes let love be your motive look at the clothes on the stack and anyone that is going to be um a, a representation of a heart that does not have love in it for your brother and that does not have a representation of a heart that will not want to be a stumbling block on anybody's part leave it there don't buy it it's not for you do you get so when I say dressing with the fear of God and humility, I'm not saying you should wear tired clothes or boring clothes. You can dress beautiful. Look at the garment of Jesus. The Bible says that they cast lot on his garment because I believe that in that time, nobody was wearing the kind of garment that Jesus wore. The garment had no sins on it. So you see that even Jesus dressed good. So dress good, look good. The most important thing is that have a heart of humility and fear God in your dressing. For those who insist that nobody should tell them how to dress and nobody should tell a woman how she should dress, Nobody should tell a lady how she dress. It's her life. She can live it the way she wants. That can go for a woman in the world. That can go for a woman whose heart is not regenerated by Christ. But you know that if you are a woman of God, when I say woman of God, I don't mean that um, you are a pastor. If you are a woman who belongs to God, you belong to God and you know that you are, you, are, you are born again, then you know that there's a standard, there's a guide. You have been bought with a price. You have to honor God with your body. People in the world can say, nobody can tell me how I should dress. Nobody can tell me this. Nobody can tell me that. You don't tell a woman how to dress or what to do, what not to do. For you as a believer, it does not work that way. There's a book. It's called the Bible. It's telling you what to do and what not to do. And if really you want to please God, you have to follow what that book says. You have to follow what it says. Women out there in the world can say what they want and live how they want. You can't live loose. People that have been bought with a price, they live in honor of the person who bought them. You don't belong to yourself anymore. You live to honor God. You live to, to worship. Your life is an act of worship to the one who died for you and gave his life for you. So when you come to that realization, you won't talk like everybody who says, don't tell women how to dress. Don't tell women this. Even if somebody is not out there saying it, there is the Bible guiding you. And do not be conformed to the world. People in the world think that, okay, this is the norm. This is what is accepted now. It's not about what is accepted. Romans chapter 12 says it to us in verse 2 that we should not be conformed to the world, but we should be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we know that as Christian ladies, that a dress code is accepted by the world or something is accepted by the world does not mean we should follow it because we are not supposed to copy the world. We are not supposed to be like the world. We are not supposed to conform. We are supposed to stand out as light. So you, don't, you can't shine as light when you copy darkness. That's the truth. You can't shine as light when you want to conform to darkness. For light to shine, that's to stand alone. So even if you will stand alone and everybody laughs, laughs at you, everybody mocks you, everybody thinks you are outdated and as long as you are in the world, you are the light of the world just like Jesus. So you can't conform to the world. Summarily, as a Christian lady, the next time you stand before the mirror to dress or you want to change your wardrobe or buy the next dressing, these things should guide you. And ask yourself, what is in my heart? What is the motive of my heart? Why am I dressing this way? When you look at the motive of your heart, if you see that it glorifies flesh and not God, then you know that that dressing should not be worn. So I believe that this video has blessed you some way or somehow. And I believe you are not offended. <laughs> I have to say that because I know this offends people. If you're in the social media space, you know how people get offended. But even if you're offended, I have to tell you the truth because I'm your sister in Christ. If this video has blessed you, I want you to share it. And there are many people that need to see this video. Share it in as many places as possible. And I believe that it's going to be a blessing to more and more people. And before you go, I'd like you to like this video again if you haven't yet done so. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Turn on the notification bell. 
as well. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today on my channel. I don't take your time for granted. Thank you so much. And before I go on, I'd like to remind you that we are pilgrims on earth. We are strangers on earth. Before we know it, Jesus would come. And he's coming for those whose hearts are right with him. He's coming for those who have accepted him as Lord and Savior. Those who have received his life. And if you are still in that place where you are struggling with sin, you know that if the rapture takes place today, you will not make it to heaven. You know that you are living a life that is not glorifying to God. I want to tell you today that Jesus loves you and he wants you to come to him. All you need to do is come with a heart that is repentant and is ready to stretch out and receive you. If you're in that category, please pray the prayer I'll be posting next and mean it from your heart. And when you pray it, I believe that the Lord grants you the grace to stand as a child of God. And for the rest of us, I pray that the Lord grants us the grace to run the race in a way that is pleasing to God. So that at the end of our life, we're going to see Jesus and we're going to dwell with him forever. Have a great life and see you in the next video. Bye.